Hey guys, how are you doing today? I hope really, really good. Oh, bloody hell. My dog is going crazy today. Now he's disturbed my filming. So today we are going to look at 20 useful phrases for socializing. So when I say socializing, what exactly do I mean? Well, socializing is making friends, hanging out with people, spending time with people, anything that involves being social. Now, as you know, there are many phrases that are very informal that you don't really learn at school or when you study English, but you learn them through being in the environment, speaking to native speakers or speaking to advanced speakers who speak like natives. So if you learn these phrases, you will sound more natural and it will help you to express your personality more as well which is really important if you're making friends and if you want to make friends so let's get started 20 phrases for socializing are you free this is a way to ask somebody if they are available to meet up or to spend time together. Are you free on Saturday, for example? Or are you free on Thursday night? Are you free? Number two, what kind of things are you into? So this is a really good way to get somebody to talk more about themselves and to tell you their hobbies, their interests, and maybe even what they do in life, whether they're studying or working or whatever. What kind of things are you into? Number three. Three, you really should, or you really must. So this is a way to advise somebody to do something. And you're very likely to use this phrase or to hear this phrase if you've done something, for example, visited a place or a city or a country, you may say to the other person, well, you really should visit. You really must go to Spain. It's a way to advise based on your own experience. You really should or you really must Number four, do you fancy? So do you fancy is a way to say, do you want to do that someday? Or does it interest you? You can use it in a sentence such as, do you fancy going on a date sometime? Do you fancy going to the cinema sometime? Do you fancy getting something to eat together? Do you fancy coming over to my house? It's a way to invite somebody to do something. Do you fancy? Number five, where shall we meet? So you've made a new friend and you're going to meet each other. So you're going to, I don't know, go to the cinema together or take a walk in the park together and get to know each other. But you need to know where you guys are meeting. So you can say, where shall we meet? Where shall we meet? Number six, I'm afraid I can't join you this time. This is the perfect phrase to say no to somebody's invitation in a polite way. Because if somebody asks you, do you want to go on a date with me? It's kind of rude to just say, no, I don't want to. Some languages and some cultures can be quite direct when they give a response like this, but in English, especially in Britain, it's really rude to just directly say, no, I don't want to. It's better to say it in a polite way. And that's where this phrase is perfect. I'm afraid I can't join you this time. I'm afraid I can't join you this time. Let me know the next time you're doing something. This is the perfect phrase to say after, I'm afraid I can't join you this time. It could be really good to say, let me know the next time you're doing something. It's a way to say, okay, this time I can't join you, but I would love to join you the next time. Although I'm saying no to your invitation now, that doesn't mean in the future that I don't want you to invite me again. So it's the perfect way to make sure that that person knows that you are interested in meeting up with them again. Let me know the next time you're doing something. Let's keep each other updated. This phrase you use to say to somebody, let's keep in touch. Maybe you met somebody and you said to them, well, 
maybe one day we can take a day trip to the next city together. They say, yes, you discuss the arrangement. Maybe we can go Saturday. They say, no, I'm busy. Well, what about Sunday? Uh, I have a party. Okay, well, the weekend after, uh, I have to see my family. At this point, <laughs> you're going to say, well, let's keep each other updated. And it means let's stay in contact. Let's stay in touch. You both still want to do it, but right now you can't make a specific plan. Let's keep each other updated. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you is a very simple phrase in English to use as a greeting after you say hello to somebody. You say, nice to meet you. It's a formality, in fact. It's something that you will always, always say when you meet somebody new at work because it's very, very polite. And in informal situations, it's just a nice way to welcome somebody and to, to be friendly to them. Nice to meet you. Do you live around here? Do you live around here is asking the person if they live in the local area. When we say around here, it means in the general local area, in the proximity to where you currently are. So do you live around here means do you live locally? Do you live close to where we are now? Do you live around here? This one has two parts. Are you studying and are you working? These are both good questions to ask and it depends on your age. If you are younger and you are a student yourself and you meet somebody, you can say, are you studying? And it's a way to ask them, are you a student too? Perhaps if you're older though, and you're not at university anymore, you're still meeting people, but perhaps they're not the students, perhaps they're older people. You may say, are you working? It depends on the context of the situation and it depends on who you're talking to. But these two questions are very good ways to initiate a conversation and get them to tell you more about yourself. Are you studying? Are you working? If you live in the UK right now, or if you are planning to go to the UK <laughs> or dreaming of it, this question is perfect, <laughs> perfect. Because British people absolutely love discussing the weather. So the question is, how do you find the weather? But this question is not just for asking about the weather. It can also be, how do you find the university that you're at? How do you find the local area? How do you find the local food? It's a way to ask that person to give an opinion on the thing that you're asking about. But if you are in the UK, how do you find the weather is a really good question to ask anybody who doesn't come from the UK. If you are from France and you're talking to somebody who is from Colombia, you could say, well, how do you find the weather here? Because the weather is so different, it's kind of interesting to hear their opinion on what it's like to live in the cold. So. How do you find? Do you want to hang out? It means, do you want to spend time together? But it's very, very informal. It's something that younger people use. It's passing time together without a real goal, apart from making a friend. You're not going to say to your boss, shall we hang out after work and talk about work? Well, it, it's not the right context. You use hang out with friends or with potential friends. Do you want to hang out? I don't know, just chill. <laughs> this is the perfect answer if somebody asks you, what do you want to do on Saturday? You can say, well, I don't know, just chill, just hang out. It's a way to, to say, I have no specific goal. I've been working all week, I've been studying all week, and now I just want to relax and have some fun. So yeah, I don't know, just chill. Let's catch up. Perhaps you see a friend that you haven't seen for a long time. You might want to ask them if they want to hang out. So you can hear all about what they've been up to, what they've been doing. And when you say, let's catch up, it means all the things that have been happening to you that I don't know. Well, I want to catch up on them. I want to learn about them and I want to be updated. So it's a way to say, let's pass some time together talking and telling each other about all the new things that have happened in our lives. Let's catch up. I could drop in. I could drop in is perhaps something that you haven't heard before. We can also use the phrase, 
I could drop by and dropping in or dropping by is going to someone's house very, very briefly. Perhaps you borrowed a book from a friend. You can say, well, I'll drop by later and give it back to you. Or why don't I drop in for a cup of tea on Saturday morning? Very British. We like to drop in on our friends and family and have a cup of tea. So I could drop in is a way to say I can come to your house, but it's not a formal thing and I won't be there for very long. It won't interrupt your day too much. I could drop in. 17. I wanted to ask you over for dinner. Uh, this phrase may seem a bit strange because we have this word over in and actually it's more like a phrasal verb to have somebody over. It means to have somebody come to your house and stay for an extended amount of time, whether for dinner or staying overnight or a party or whatever. You have people over to spend a long time at your house. It's a really nice thing to do, especially if you're a student. It's a nice thing to do. You can make a really cheap meal. When I was at university, we used to do that a lot have people over for dinner, a really cheap one, and it was a really nice way to get to know people and to make new friends. I wanted to ask you over for dinner. Do you want to get a drink sometime? Now, a fact about UK, we have quite a big drinking culture and normally when we make friends or when we want to spend time with people, we say, shall we get a drink? And it, it means basically having a glass of wine or having a beer together, okay? Very informal. So do you want to get a drink sometime? Normally you assume it's an alcoholic drink, but if you don't drink alcohol, like if you're Muslim, for example, you can just as easily say, do you want to get a coffee sometime? And they both work the same. Asking for a drink is more of an evening thing and asking for a coffee is more of a daytime thing. So it depends on the context. But I do have to say that if you don't drink alcohol or you can't drink alcohol, you can still ask people, what, do you want to get a drink sometime? Because it's a social invitation to hang out together but just be honest and say well I don't drink but we could get a drink you can have a beer and I can have a coke or whatever it doesn't matter you don't have to drink alcohol but do you want to get a drink sometime or do you want to get a coffee sometime it's a perfect informal invitation to just hang out and make friends do you want to get a drink sometime Drop me a text. Perhaps you have plans to meet a friend later, but you're not really sure what time that you guys are gonna be ready to meet. You may say to them, well, drop me a text when you're ready. Drop me a text when you come out of work. Drop me a text when you finish class. It means basically just send me a text, keep me updated. And the thing is, now that texting is kind of less common and people are more likely to use WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, you can still say, drop me a text, and that just means send me a message. You could receive a message on Facebook, you could receive a message on WhatsApp, whatever. It just generally means send me a message. Drop me a text. And it's very informal, so don't use it in a professional situation, and especially not with a client. And the last one is a very, very, very informal, you probably won't hear any older people say this, but if you are a younger person and you like to speak a little bit more sort of naturally uh, street, I guess, you could say, hit me up when you're free. And it basically means, well, when you're available, just tell me, send me a message, give me a call, whatever. Hit me up is a slang term for contact me. <laughs> hit me up when you are free. There you go, guys. 20 useful phrases for socializing in English. So I chose these phrases because you will hear them used a lot. It's good to know them because it makes you sound kind of more natural and it will make you seem more friendly. And if you're in the UK, it will make you seem more accustomed to the culture and that can definitely work in your favor for making people like you and feeling like they can relate to you. That way, you're more likely to make friends. So I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to click like. Of course, subscribe if you haven't already and if you like what I'm doing here. Also go check out my Instagram and I also have TikTok now. I am at English with Carla everywhere. So I'm gonna see you in the next video and I hope that you have a really good day. Bye.